Are you still running your Vim configuration in Vim script like it's the 90s? I recently ported over my VimRC from Vim script to Lua, and in this video I'm going to be going over if it was worth it, why you might want to do this, and how to do it yourself. So in case you didn't know, NeoVim, which I actually recommend most people these days to use over vanilla Vim, but NeoVim adds support for the Lua programming language. And with this support for Lua, it has kind of ushered in a new renaissance for plugins because one of the biggest complaints that a lot of people had about Vim for the longest time was just that Vim script is not that fun to work in, especially when it comes to plugin developers. Traditional Vim script was definitely lacking in some features compared to a more robust programming language like Lua. And so now that they can actually develop plugins in Lua, a lot of them have jumped at the chance and there are a lot of new, great, high quality plugins that are being written in Lua these days. And so of course I wanted to download a lot of these new Lua plugins and give them a try. And I have been using a lot of these plugins for a while. But the thing is, whenever you configure these new Lua plugins, you have to do it in Lua. And so my configuration file right here, this is my old VimRC right here. But it was getting to be kind of this weird mix of Vim script and Lua. And so eventually I just decided to rewrite the entire thing in Lua and just do away with the Vim script. So that was the main reason why I converted my NeoVim configuration to Lua. But there are a few reasons why you might want to do this. And let me just show you how this looks having a weird mix of Lua and Vim script together. So you can do this with something like this. So I can just put a Lua snippet right here with this syntax right here. And you can kind of create a block of Lua, so everything inside here can be interpreted as Lua. But like I said, it gets kind of messy having this mix of the two languages. So if you want a cleaner, more organized experience, that is a reason why you might want to convert the entire thing to Lua. Now I will say that there aren't any really strong reasons right now why you must convert your Vim config to Lua. You aren't going to get some crazy performance benefits or anything like that. But you may want to use this as kind of an introduction to Lua because maybe Lua is something that you want to learn. Lua as a language is used all over the place, whereas Vim script is only used inside Vim. So it definitely seems more useful to learn something like Lua that can be used in a wide array of applications. And if you want to, you can even use it to build NeoVim plugins down the road if that's something you're interested in. Rewriting your config in Lua is not going to make you an expert, but it is definitely a nice introduction. I'll teach you a little bit of Lua in this video as well. And another thing is that a lot of people just really hate Vim script with a passion for whatever reason. I get that it's not the most capable language, but I never understood the full-fledged hatred that some people have. But you might have this and you might want to remove every single instance of Vim script in your life. That is another reason why you might want to do this. And finally, the last reason, I think this is just a good way to clean up your VimRC. So this is a weird mishmash of a VimRC that I compiled over years of running Vim and is really messy and I don't understand half of what it does because a lot of this was just copy and pasted here when I first started using Vim. And so rewriting it in Lua kind of helped me understand some things and clean it up so I actually know everything that my configuration is doing. So this is a good way to kind of spring clean your init.vim file. And if you have nothing else going on on a lazy Saturday afternoon, this is a pretty good way to spend it. But one reason why you might not want to do this is because Lua is not going to be backwards compatible with Vim. So if you want to someday just go back to vanilla Vim, if you're not 100% sold on the vision that NeoVim has for Vim, then you may not want to do this because while NeoVim will always have support for Vim script, the same cannot be said for Vim and its support of Lua, of course. But for me, I'm okay with going all in on NeoVim and if you are too, then let's just jump into it. So you don't really have to know too much Lua in order to write your init.vim in Lua, but you probably should learn a little bit just to make the process easier. And I'm just gonna go over a very basic, like one minute introduction to Lua. Obviously, if you want to learn more, then please do. There are many other people who can explain it much better than I can. But just some very basic things. If you want to set a variable in Lua, you do it like this. This is declaring a variable called num and setting it to the value one. And this is a global variable, but if you just want a local variable, let's say we just want it to be local to this file, then you can add the local keyword here and you can set this to a string. 
And you can also write strings like this with single quotes, or you can also use this double bracket syntax, which I actually prefer most of the time because this can also be used to write multi-line strings. And also inside these double brackets, you don't have to escape characters like you do in these quotation mark strings. So most of the time I will be using this double bracket syntax for strings. You can call a function like this. We are just printing this string. And if there's only one argument to the function, then you can leave out the parentheses. You can just put a space here and put the string here. Same thing with the double bracket syntax. And finally, you can write a table like this. And a table in Lua is sort of similar to an array. So you can create something like an array like this. And it can also be used kind of like an object. So you can have keys and values in here as well. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but comments can be specified with this dash dash syntax. But this is all we're going to be using in order to configure our NeoVim. So let's just get started. First off, of course, you want to go into your NeoVim configuration. At least on Linux, it is going to be under .config slash nvim. And we can just open this up. And you will have to create a new file called init.lua. Instead of traditionally, it will be init.vim. And in Lua, you can separate these into different files. That's what I've done here. It is optional, but you may want to do that. But I'll go over that later. First off, let's go over our settings. All right, let me just open up my old configuration file so you can compare the two. Now, the most basic way to convert some Vim script to Lua, you can run the command vim.cmd. And inside here, you can just write Vim script. So if I were to copy all of these and just put them in here, then as you can imagine, this will work exactly the same as it did over here. And so I guess if you are lazy, you can in a way, rewrite your entire vimrc in Lua just by wrapping the entire thing with this. But of course, that's not really in the spirit of Lua. And while you can do this for some things that don't really have a one-to-one -one equivalent in Lua, it's not recommended for most things, but it can be there as a fallback if you can't figure out how to do something specific in Lua. But setting options in NeoVim is pretty straightforward. You just use this syntax instead of just setting all of these as you would here. So for example, if I want to set something like line numbers and relative numbers, you can see I have the same thing over here, but I'm doing vim.opt.number equals true, and I'm also setting relative number to true. And so converting most of these to Lua will be pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of things that you need to know. So in vim script, you would do something like set wrap if you want line wrap, but if you don't want the lines to wrap, then you would type something like no wrap, and so you might be thinking if you want no wrap, then you would just set no wrap to true. But since in Lua, we're working with Booleans, like true false values, we can just set this as false. So vim opt wrap equals false is equivalent to set no wrap here. And you might get confused about some of these. So I would check the help document if you're not sure about something. We can run command help no wrap. And if we run that, then we can see well, let me make this bigger, but we can see at least in NeoVim, these two config options have been changed to one single one wrap, and it is now a Boolean, so you can set that to be true or false. And so that's how we know that we can set this as false in order to get that effect. And so all of this is going to be pretty self-explanatory, but just to give you an idea of the power of Lua, since it is a proper programming language, we can do things like, let's set a variable here, local set, is going to be equal to vim.opt. And after that, we can just go here and change this to set. And we can do the same for all of these. And you might think that's a little bit simpler and that's something you can do in Lua. But the only other thing that you need to know about setting these options is down here where we're setting a global variable, at least for our leader key. This is probably something that most people will want to change. So in order to change your leader key, you type vim.g map leader and this g right here this is a table of all of the global editor variables and again like almost everything in this video you can look it up in the excellent help with vim.g it's just telling us that this is global editor variables like i said but you won't be using this too much mostly for the leader key and then some other things like for example some of these plugins are configured with global variables like this plugin right here, I'm configuring it with this global variable right here. And so if you want to rewrite this, I can go to my plugins file 
And this global variable set in Vim script right here will be rewritten in Lua as Vim.g and then the name of the variable. And then I just rewrote this as a table. All right, so we've gone over how to set options in Lua, but what about key bindings? So let me just open up another file here. And the syntax is a little bit different here, but as we can see here, it's not too crazy. The syntax is basically vim.keymap.set, and then it takes in a few arguments here. So the first argument will be the mode that we want to be in. So let's say normal mode. Obviously that will correspond to these right here, these normal mode remaps. The second one will be the key that we press. So in this case, we're pushing leader Y. And then finally, the command that we want to execute. So we are basically just yanking this to the system keyboard. And that is basically the equivalent of this right here. But as you can see right here, we have both a normal mode remap and a visual mode remap right here. And you can do that in one line in Lua just by making this into a table. And so we put both the normal mode and visual mode in here. That makes it a little bit cleaner. And so this line right here is equivalent to these two lines right here. And you can just write all of the others in similar fashion. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And so maybe it is a little bit more verbose, but it's not too bad once you get used to it. And again, if you don't want to rewrite all of this syntax every single time, you can write a variable or a function in order to make this a little bit cleaner. One last thing is that you can also call vim commands right here using vim.cmd. And so this is going to contain all of the commands that you can write. So for example, if I type command EX, then this would exit me to the file tree. And that is basically what it is doing. So I'm just sending it to leader PV. And if I do type leader PV, then it will execute that command. That makes sense. Next up, let's go over how to source different files. So as you can see here in my init.lua, I am requiring three different files here. And if you look right here inside my fuzzy finder, I actually have a whole bunch of different configuration files all over the place. And while you definitely can put everything in one file like I have here, uh, most of the time, most people will want to separate them into separate Lua files. And it's to stay more organized, especially since Lua configuration tends to be a little bit more verbose than Vim script. So you usually have to end up writing more lines of code in order to accomplish the same task. That's just something you'll have to deal with. And so a good way to stay more organized is to separate these into different files but it's totally optional. You can just have one giant configuration file like you always have if you want to. But the way you source different files here is with require. And so your init.vim, whenever you require something, it is going to look in your Lua directory. So you will have to create a new directory here called Lua. And from there, most people will probably recommend you to create a folder in here called something like your user. I just put my name in here because I'm a massive narcissist and want to see my name all the time. But inside here, this is where you want to store all of your configuration files. So I have the key bindings, the plugins, and the settings, as I showed you. And I even have additional files under plugins, which is where I keep separate configuration for all the plugins. But I'll get into those later. So just showing you that you can really separate these out and organize things a little bit better. Of course, you could do this in Vim script as well, but it's more common to do this in Lua. And so with this init.lua, all I'm doing is sourcing from these directories. So in the Lua folder, I'm sourcing from the Eric directory and from there, the plugins file inside there. That's going to be, of course, the file called plugins.lua, settings.lua, and on and on. But finally, let's get into my plugins. One of the most important parts of any Vim configuration is going to be the plugins. And so I made a whole video on the past going over my favorite Vim plugin manager called Vimplug. But for NeoVim, I actually switched over to using a Lua plugin manager. And this is my no means necessary. I basically just did it because it seemed fun. And maybe it had a few additional features over the classic Vimplug. But if you want to, you can just wrap the entirety of your Vimplug configuration. So these are all of my plugins right here. You can just wrap all of that in this vim.command syntax and get the same effect. But if you want to switch over to a Lua plugin manager, I would recommend either Packer is a popular one and Lazy is another popular one. I might do a video on these in the future, but there's not too much to them. All of this uh, crazy syntax that you see right here, I just copied this from the GitHub for Packer. 
And I'll leave a link to that in the description if for some reason you want to switch over to Packer as well. But these are just a few functions and commands just installing the package manager if it isn't installed already. And an auto command that will reload NeoVim every time that you save the plugins file. So just as an example, if I were to save this, then it would just automatically update all of my plugins, install any new plugins that I might have added to it. So as you can see, just, just from here, I have updated a few of my plugins. That is nice to have. And then I'm just declaring all of my plugins right here. Some of the plugins are the same from before. Of course, you can still use all of your favorite Vimscript plugins that you've been using for years. But if you want to use some of the new Lua powered plugins, then you definitely can. And I do recommend a lot of them. I'll probably do a whole other video in the future about my favorite NeoVim plugins. But all I'm really doing here is pulling these in. And then for some of them, I am calling a function, which just pulls in the configuration options I have for these. So I have a file under my plugins directory called lualine.lua. .lua. And if I just open this up, then you can see the configuration that I have here. And this configuration code is just from the GitHub for this plugin. So I'm not doing anything crazy, just setting a few options here for the plugins. And you can have this in the same file, but I like to keep them separate just to make it a little bit cleaner. So I still have some classics in here like VimWiki, but you may also want to explore some new plugins. Like for example, this Zen Mode plugin, it does have a few features over something like Goyo, which before I previously recommended in another video as a distraction free Vim rating plugin. Just because NeoVim has some more features and these plugins are able to take advantage of them, that's why some of them might be an improvement on some of the classics. But I'm not going to be going over too much more of the plugins right here. Again, if you want to take a look at this yourself, I'll leave a link to this in the description. But if you want to use your old plugin manager, then you are more than welcome to. And that's all there is to it. That is my new Lua rewrite of my old VimRC. And was it worth it to spend all of this time switching this over? Well, I would say yes and no. So it didn't give me any tangible benefits per se, but I vastly prefer working in this new configuration that I have. It is much cleaner and so it's easier to add and edit things in here. And I've been having a lot of fun over the past few weeks and months just tinkering around with my Vim configuration, trying to make it a little bit better. And so if that sounds like you, then you might find some value in doing this. But let's be honest, the real reason why you probably want to do this is just to procrastinate on something more important. And so spending the afternoon tinkering around here will definitely scratch that itch. So give this a try if you want to. My entire configuration will be in a GitHub repo in the description. But if you want to start completely from scratch, then you can definitely check out some other repos that people have made. So I actually based a lot of this on the primogens in it.lua. If you want to completely start over from scratch, this is another great resource and others have made similar resources. So before you actually do it yourself, you can take a look at how other people configure theirs and that'll probably make the process a little bit easier. But I would say give this a try if you finally want to say goodbye to Vimscript. Plus you get to be cool and hop on the latest trend like everyone else. Enjoy.